Good morning. My name is Father Sean Fernandez. I'm the Dean of St. Mary's Cathedral. The Australian religious response to climate change and the host community of St. Mary's Cathedral warmly welcomes everyone to our gathering today. We especially welcome the leaders from different faith traditions who are assembled here. I think. It's a remarkable witness to our unity as we speak on this important topic. We welcome any guests who may be new to ARC and everyone who has traveled a long way to get here this morning. The Reverend Mitchell Garlett from the Uniting Aboriginal and Islander Christian Congress, WA, will do the welcome to country. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I want to take this um, opportunity to pay my respect to my elders, both past and present, for them being able to hold on to our culture and our language for a long time. I also want to pay my respect to my non-Indigenous elders, both past and present, for if it wasn't the journey of our elders, for those who had gone before, for those who had called this place home, we wouldn't be where we are today on our journey together as first and second, and second peoples of this land. I feel honoured to be here this morning, um, a privilege to know my language and my culture because it helped me build on my identity of who I am as an Indigenous man of this land. It helped me um, know where I belong with my connection to this land and it brought me closer in the connection that I have with our God. But in language, I want to say, Kaya Mamanichi Yir Nyining and Yunga Boija, and Maman and Wolo Nyining and Wang Nyining and Murut Ginyan and Quirt Barang Nyining and Boija, and Maman Wang in Yunga Murn, Maman Wang in Yunga Murn. And barring and quirt and boyja. 
and dumb and gaman go wearing cut a word killing and dumb and gaman go wearing and barring and cutting and young a mourn and what will a mort and you are calling and cora cora and worrying and you are calling and calloc my and young a voyager and what will a mort and calling and you are cool and wabbing and voyager and young a mourn And you are calling a word will of calling a and double can and word calling. Double can and word calling and carriage in, and court and barring in. And court and jerp jerp. And court and jerp jerp. And nunukut and you are called. And mama nichi ear ninning. And calling a and you are calling and voyager. And in English it says that a long time ago, our Creator, our God, He allowed the dark-skinned people to look after this land. He said, if you look after this land, in return, it'll look after you. And Dhamma and Gamanga, that's our old people, our old people of yesterday, and for those who still journey with us this day, who've been able to hold on to our language and our culture for us to pass on to, gen to generations to come. And what will Murt and you are call and Kura Kura and Awari and you are call is that our non indigenous family and friends came from a long way across the water. They came here to this old land of the Nyungar people and they made a home. See, your children and my children work and play together upon this land. Nyungar Murut and Wadwila Murut and Wabin and Boija. As we journey together as first and second peoples, we have one job to do. And Karajin and Dwok and Kurt Barangin and Ward Kuling and Dapokan Ward Kuling. And that is, as we journey together, we have to listen to one another. Listen not only with our ears but with our hearts for a better journey for tomorrow, for the generations that follow. Ngan quirt ngan jirup jirup, that my heart is happy that we've gathered here this morning at this place. Ngan kaya kaya wanju, thank you and welcome. Thank you very much, Mitchell. And now I invite the Reverend Dr. Catalina Tahafi Williams from the Trinity Uniting Church in the city, present some introductory remarks. We rise together today, along with fellow people of faith around the world. There must be no more time wasted, no more wasted opportunities to act, no more new call oil and gas projects and finance for them. There must be no more damage to our life-giving planet for the sake of short-term profit. The Australian Religious Response to Climate Change, or ARRC in Australia, and Green Faith International globally, strongly advocate for government policies and corporate cultures which will build a better future for all, especially those who are suffering most from climate change. In this Faiths for Climate Justice service, we gathered here are especially mindful of the peoples of the Pacific. Ocean acidification, overfishing, droughts, 
and superstorms are devastating their food sources. Sea level rise is threatening their homes and with them, their belonging to the land, their cultures, indeed their very survival as nations. The peoples of the Pacific are among those hit the hardest and earliest by the climate emergency, along with indigenous peoples around the world. But my first Pacific, but my Pacific families and people are not the only folks threatened by climate change. Countries like Australia are also impacted and indeed threatened by climate emergencies. And in particular, First Nations people like the Gomoroi, the Wangan, and Jagalingu, and the Gudaniji nations valiantly strive to protect their country from fracking or coal mining, only for their spiritual connections to country and their human rights to be trampled. In Western Australia, that includes communities across the Kimberley and the Pilbara, worried about the impacts of the gas industry. Meanwhile, corporations in Australia as a nation profit from the fossil fuel exports that are causing the climate, the climate crisis. We lament this profound injustice. In Australia, we call on our elected representatives to promote public policies aligned with climate justice. We want them to take these to the United Nations climate negotiations next month in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. As people of faith, we are unified in our compassion for others and for our common home. And so we call on the Albanese government to stop new coal and gas mining or expansions of existing projects and public subsidies for fossil fuel projects, fully respect the rights of First Nations peoples to protect their country, restart Australia's contributions to the United Nations Green Climate Fund, assist extractive industry workers to prosper through jobs in sustainable industries, and help create and endorse a global fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. We know the energy that moves all things, the oneness of existence, the diversity and uniqueness of every moment of creation, every shape and form, the spirit of life at the heart of all things. Humbled by our knowledge, with awe and reverence, we come before the mystery of life, the breath, wind, spirit of the universe. And I welcome the Venerable Arjan Brahmali from the Bodhinyana Theravada Buddhist Monastery. Will lead us in prayer. Good. Okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. I'm going to do a quick reading of a uh, word of the Buddha called, known as the uh, Sutta or Discourse on Loving Kindness, and it goes as follows uh, May all beings uh, be happy and safe. Whatever living creatures there are, uh, without exception, uh, whether frail or firm, uh, the smallest to the largest, uh, visible or invisible, uh, living far or near, present and future generations, uh, may all beings uh, be happy. Uh, let no one do wrong uh, against another, uh, nor look down on anyone uh, anywhere. Uh, Though provoked or aggrieved, uh, let them not wish pain on another. Uh, even as a mother would protect with her life uh, her child, her only child, uh, so too for all creatures uh, develop a boundless heart. Uh, with goodwill for the whole world, uh, 
develop a boundless heart above, below, and all round, unrestricted, without enemy or foe. Thank you. Thank you. And now the Reverend Mujio Williams, the head priest at the Kozanji Rinzai Zen Temple. There was a chant, is that right? So, um, before giving this chant, I'm told I'm allowed to explain. Uh, I should say, uh, in Buddhism, we have the notion of Buddha mind. Buddha mind being all things, the stones, the trees, people, this has equivalency in Christianity and other religions as the expression, God in all things. As such, to harm a thing is to harm oneself because we are connected through this universal existence that we are. The first precept in Buddhism is not to kill, not to kill life. So when we harm this earth, when we undertake actions which are, uh, how can we say, mindless, <laughs> Uh, we are harming, we are breaking the first precept of not killing life. Uh, I think this is a universal idea to all religions, to all people, even for people who do not have a religion. Um, so I came here today because I feel that we are here to, not to tell government that they are doing a bad job, but to support government, to support them, because they have to do a very difficult job in changing our lives, to help them and to let them know that we are here to help them, that we are behind them as they change. So, Jizo <laughs> This is a uh, very, very old gatha. Uh, it predates Buddhism. It uh, empowers from the earth. Thank you. Thank you. And now Bishop Don Sproxton, Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Perth, share a prayer with us. All powerful God, you are present in the universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us 
the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with your peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love and peace. Amen. Now I welcome Sri Damjibai Korea, President of the Hindu Council of Australia, Perth chapter, to speak to us. Namaste, all my brothers and sisters. First I pray. Om Nama Satchidananda Rupaya Paramatmane Jyotirmaya Swarupaya Vishwamangalya Murtaye Prakruti Pancha Bhutani Graha Loka Swarastatha Disha Kalas Chasarvesam Sada Kurvantu Mangalam Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Badrani Pasyantu Makas Chittu Khabagbhave Om Shanti 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 This meaning of this prayer we are the one family of the world. We call Vasudeva Kutumbakam. Whole world is a one family. We are part and parcel of the God. God is make this nature. And we believe in the five elements. Means the earth, water, fire, light that make our bodies and we sustain them. We need to protect them. We need to save them. We don't need to destroy it. We need to make them. And for whole world, whole humanity, we pray everyone be happy 
everyone get a peace everyone get a happiness in the soul we believe in this hinduism this prayer om shanti 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 thank you very much I don't know if you share the feeling, but this feeling as we've been listening to the sharing, but we're really in a privileged space here, where so many different traditions are meeting and enriching us all. I welcome Dr. Rateb Janaid, who is president of the Australian Federation of Islamic Councils, who will share a prayer with us. I will start with a greeting in the Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma shrah li sadri wa yassal li amli wa hlil uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina ameen Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in. I start my prayer in your holy name of Allah. I praise you and send peace and salutation upon all you prophets and messengers and especially the final messenger Muhammad's peace and blessing upon him. O oh Allah, we appeal to you through your attribute of healing to heal our world and protect the people living with the effects of climate change now and give them strength. O oh Allah, give patience and strength to those facing rising temperatures, drought, water shortage, unpredictable weather, failed crops, flooding, land loss, and salination of vinyl water supplies. O oh Allah, allow all people everywhere to recognize the importance of protecting and maintaining balance in our world so that humans, animals, and vegetation can maintain a cycle of regrowth and regeneration. O oh Allah, allow our politicians and leaders to act in the best interest of all nations today and all people in the future in order to avoid catastrophic changes. O oh Allah, inspire our leaders to act justly so that those who have contributed so little to the problems we are facing and have fewer resources with which to face it, are not left to shoulder our burden on their own. O oh Allah, fill the, the hearts of those who lead rich nations with a sense of fairness, mercy, and compassion toward poor country that are already suffering the effects of change climate. O oh Allah, change us and use us in ways you are pleased with so that we can be force that restores balance to your world and the protection of all your creation. Amen. Now I welcome Dr. Al Ribao. Chairperson of the local spiritual assembly of the Baha'is of Wanneroo. Thank you. Thank you, dear friends. Right now, before us is an incredible choice. Do we choose to have one planet and one people? Do we choose to address these terrible tragedies that are happening around the world as adults, or do we remain in the chains of our childhood, where we let racism, division, greed run our world? We know there's very little time to change things. And all of us must rise up, I think, to a better heart and move forward to see ourselves as one planet, one people. I bring to you from the Baha'i writings uh, just a few things. And one idea that I would give to you 
is that we cannot segregate the human heart from the environment outside of us and say that once one of these is reformed, everything will be reformed. Man is organic in this world. His inner life molds the environment and is in itself deeply affected by it. The one acts upon the other, and every abiding change in the life of man is a result of these mutual reactions. We know um, that when we look at this world that stands around us, that it's a miracle in its creation. And we're told that nature in its essence is the embodiment of my name, the name of God, the maker, the creator. Its manifestations are diversified by varying causes. And in this diversity, there are signs for men of discernment. Nature is God's will and is its expression and through its expression in and through the contingent world. It is a dispensation of providence ordained by the ordainer, the all wise. How can we, as people of conscience, allow this natural world that we've been gifted slowly and maybe not so slowly at times to be deteriorated in a world now that we see through climate change that there are really no borders between us that can stop the forces of nature, that can stop the forces that we unleash? I'll leave you with a prayer. Magnified be thy name, O Lord my God. Thou art he whom all things worship and who worshipeth no one, who is the Lord of all things and is the vassal of none, who knoweth all things and is known of none. Thou dost wish to make thyself known unto men, therefore thou didst, through a word of thy mouth, bring creation into being and fashion the universe. There is none other God except Thee, the Fashioner, the Creator, the Almighty, the Most Powerful. I implore Thee by this very word that is shown forth above the horizon of Thy will to enable me to drink deep of the living waters through which Thou hast vivified the hearts of Thy chosen ones and quickened the souls of them that love Thee, that I may at all times and under all conditions turn my face wholly towards Thee. Thou art the God of power of glory and bounty. No God is there but the, the supreme ruler, the all-glorious, the omniscient. Do we now turn to God and take up our responsibility for this world that we've been given? Do our hearts become quickened with the living waters? It's up to us. Thank you. Since to end our time of prayer and reflection together, I invite the moderator of the Uniting Church, W.A. Susie Thomas, and the Reverend Dr. Christy Kapper, Deputy Warden of Wollaston Theological College of the Anglican Diocese, to lead us in prayer. As most of you know, the word Amen has the roots in Jewish, Christian, and Islamic tradition. When we conclude the prayer, instead of saying Amen to every small prayers, when we conclude the prayer, I say in the name of the Lord, we can say together the word Amen. Thank you. We, our voice from faith communities across the world, Join in prayer and medication for the meaningful decision and intention for urgent co-action at the climate conference in Egypt. We pray for courage and compassion to transform those human activities, destroying nature and altering the climate system on which our lives depend. We pray our hearts reject fear and embrace love, hope, and transformation for a more healthy, safe, clean, and sustainable world. We pray for strength so that our, our lives are 
are patterns and examples. We pray for protection of climate activists and environmental defenders who often risk their health, if not their lives, to break the silence. We pray for protection of climate scientists to work without intimidation and with sufficient funding and support. We pray for protection of the poor and the most vulnerable communities, those least responsible yet most affected by our insufficient climate action. We pray that our leaders listen to grasp the urgency expressed in the latest science and to guide our economic systems to reject dependence on extraction, exploitation and accumulation through dispossession. We pray for wisdom, courage and compassion in our climate negotiations, negotiations to find sh shared solutions together that honour needs of the poorest while reflecting meaningful action from the richest and the highest images. We pray the developed countries will lead in greenhouse gas emissions and climate finance as they promised in the Paris Agreement. We pray leaders in all countries will do all they can rapidly reduce extraction and burning of a fossil fuel and promote sustainable economic, social and political system to stabilise global temperature rise at 1.5 above pre-industrial level. We pray that developed countries meet their promise to help developing countries implement climate action. We pray for sufficient finance for loss of and damage supporting those communities already profoundly affected by climate change no matter what we do. We pray for the Paris Agreement rulebook for ambitious, effective and fair compliance in common timeframes. We pray for human rights and Indigenous people's rights to be included and better protected. We pray for an inclusive conference in which the voices of the least powerful are heard alongside the most powerful. We pray that delegates attending the COP remains healthy and return home in peace. We say together, Amen. Thank you everybody for attending today. That brings us to the end of proceedings. Uh, I'm just stepping in on behalf of the Dean to close the service. Uh, but thank you all for, for coming today. Thank you especially to our uh, faith leaders who have uh, shared with us today. Thanks also uh, to our musician who played at the start, Christine Morrison. Uh, thanks Mitchell, uh, Reverend Mitchell Garlett for giving us the welcome to country. Uh, and also thanks to our hosts in uh, Father Sean Fernandez, the Dean here at the St Mary's Cathedral, and Bishop uh, Don Sproxton, the Auxiliary Bishop for the Catholic Archdiocese of Perth.